There's nothing like a good top 10 list, but one top 10 list I've never seen, probably for good reason, is the list of top 10 most compatible ATX cases, as in cases that can take the most PC hardware, taking into account fans, radiators, graphics cards, drives, you name it. One reason is it's probably not very helpful, but it's also hard to properly consider unless you, I don't know, uh, spreadsheet all the specs of an awful lot of cases. It's a good job my research for my case reviews built that spreadsheet because we can exploit it for fun, games, and above all, information. So let's get into it. The top 10 most compatible ATX cases. Stay tuned for the ATX cases with the worst compatibility soon. Also, disclaimers. This only takes into account around 300 cases, not all the cases that exist now or have existed. But if you think I've missed something even greater than the ones on this list, please help me out in the comments. Also, this is essentially an ATX motherboard and large supporting case list since ATX boards are pretty much the only solid large motherboard size standard that cases use these days. Some that support larger use EATX, XLATX, CEB, uh, on, and the rest, it's just all over the place. And the most popular EATX is just a nonsense standard. It's not even really a standard that can be basically the same size as an ATX board, but if I put EATX into the spreadsheet and it's basically the same as an ATX Motherboard, how am I supposed to account for that? Take measure. Kicking things off at number 10 is the EVGA DG87 or 87. Yes, a 2016 case, and what a piece. Built in fan controller and temperature sensor, all the bells and whistles. What carried this into the top 10 was the 12 hard drive slots, which is nearly as much drive storage as any on this list. Well, actually third place anyway. This is a list of the most compatible cases after all. A little lacking in the fan and radiator capacity compared to the rest, which stopped it from progressing any further. You're limited to up to a 420 millimeter radiator to the, to the front and top and a 280 millimeter to the rear. Oh yeah, th those are big numbers, but not in this list. Quite a striking 119-litre unit starts us off. Let's move on to number nine. Ninth is the Thermaltake Tower 900. Just looking at it, you can see where it excels. Actually, it's not that obvious. It's not its water cooling support or just being really big at 153 liters large. No, it's the CPU cooler support at 260 millimeters, the biggest on this list. For reference, the largest CPU cooler of the Air variety on PC Part Picker is the 172 millimeter tall Cooler Master Master Air Maker 8. Unfortunately, that's all that really stands out for this Titan, at least compared to the rest of this list. Its radiator support is joint third smallest on the list, tying with the DG87, with support for a 480 and 560 millimeter radiator, which sounds big, but compared to the entire 300 case list, it only comes in at a normalized three-ish out of 10. Number eight on my list is the Abcon Core AL1000 Sync, the same manufacturer that brought us the Ramesis 780, the one that GN reviewed and didn't do too well. While it's not as enormous as the previous, it's still 120 liters large. Like the Tower 900, CPU cooler support is where this case excels and you can fit a 235 millimeter tall unit into this thing, nearly equally as nuts as the former. The power supply unit support is also pretty nuts on this thing at 350 millimeters deep, but it didn't make it any higher on this list thanks to the lacking seven slot, 420 millimeter deep PCI Express slot section. And its radiator support is extra disappointing with a couple of 360s and a single 120 millimeter radiator. Looks pretty cool though, but awfully inefficient, but that's style baby. Ooh. In at number seven is the second Thermaltake case on the list, and there's more to come. It's the Core X5TG. Only 92 liters on this one, only 92 liters. That's double of the H510 flow that I've just finished reviewing up in the top right hand corner, if you like. Like the others, it's got overcool CPU coolers compatibility at 230 millimeters, only this time it's a sideward like setup. 
Noticeably better radiator support with up to two 360 millimeter radiators to the top and bottom, a 360 millimeter radiator to the front and side, and a 140 millimeter to the rear. And that's just still just only half, or just over half, of the largest on this list. Number six, and after three attempts, I finally have corrected the order of the two Fantex cases. Turns out Fantex have a real problem with correctly synchronizing their specification sheet and their manuals. Anyway, in at six is the Fantex Enthu Pro 2. And while I don't like the name, it's just a bit awkward, I do like the value compared to the rest of the list. A little foreshadowing there. This thing costs, or at least it did cost $140. That's just nuts. It's also the smallest on the list at 78 liters, not 178 liters, 78 liters, which actually speaks to some more efficient design. That's more efficient, not very efficient. Highlights of the Enthu Pro 2 include the 14 PISA Express slots, eight horizontal, three vertical, and another three from the PISA, from the extra ITX board compatibility. That makes the 14. It's a dual PC option. And its drive support is solid with four three and a half inch drives and 11 two and a half inch drives out of the box. Otherwise, relative to the list, everything else is pretty all right. And that's excellent considering it's the smallest and the cheapest at $140 when it launched. Impressive. Number five now, and it's Fantex again with the uh, bleh, seriously expensive $900, $900 Enthu Elite. Stumbling over words there, that's ridiculous. What carries the Enthu Elite in this list is it's again great CPU cooler support, 210 millimeters, and that's about it really. Well, I say that's about it, but nothing else really helps it stand out from the crowd. It can take six three and a half inch drives and four two and a half inch drives, which is excellent, but nothing special compared to the rest. I guess the 10 piece express slots and half a meter of room for the graphics card is notable. Biggest on the list, but practically inefficient. I mean, it's most of this list is just practically inefficient, but there we go. There's a lot of water cooling support in this one, but it's a little, clashy. As in, a side intake radiator would clash with the front radiator. There's not a lot more to say on this one. It only just edges out ahead of the Enthu Pro 2, and for the price, I really don't see why. Sure, there's a few years difference between the two, but I can't see that making a difference in the cost of I don't know, manufacture. It's more than likely something to do with the quality of the materials. Uh, maybe vibranium or something. In at number four is the Anades AI Crystal XL AR3. What makes this one stick out is its drive support. You can get, if you can find this case anywhere, 15 three and a half inch drives and three two and a half inch drives simultaneously. Power supply near depth support is good at 220 millimeters, but the fan and radiator support is lousy, at least in this list, at a couple of 480 millimeter radiators to the top and front with a 140 in the rear. But to be fair, it's only an 87 liter case, so that's very reasonable and actually great for the case uh, for a case of such a size. Back to thermal take for number three, and it's the Core W100, which you can still buy today. And I think there's a decimal place issue on the Google search. There should be $329, not $32.99. What pushes this case up so far in the list? Well, it's not 200 millimeter CPU cooler support, nor the 10 PCI Express slots, and definitely not the 180 millimeter power supply unit clearance. No, it's all about fan support. I think images speak better than words here, but when you're talking about 12 200 millimeter fans, there's not much more to say. It's a good use of money, probably not, but it's a funny proposal. Drive support is also pretty impressive in this case with room for up to 10 three and a half inch drives. Closing into number one, the runner up on my list, at least I swear this isn't an advert, in number two is Thermaltake, again, with the View 91. Another monster at 153 liters, and honestly, 
doesn't really push the spec on the W100 much. The extra vertical PCI Express slots push the total up to 12 with up to 470 millimeters of clearance with depth wise. It can take an extra two, three and a half inch drives compared to the former, 12 in total. And apart from cost, which I best I can tell is around $450, there's not much more that makes it stand out. But that's the nature of this list. And last but not least, the manufacturer that brought us literally half of this list, not in a sponsored way, promise. First place goes to Thermaltake with the Core W200, a 218 litre, probably dual system behemoth. And since it's in first place, I think it's only fitting to go through all the core specs. CPU cooler support sits at 200 millimeters, way well above the 172 millimeter Maker 8 earlier. We've also got 10 PCI Express slots, Sorry, that's another spec writing issue. I mean, we've got two sets of 10 PCI Express slots, 10 per motherboard. That's the kind of thing that this spec sheet just, it fails to show. But looking at the manual and actually just pictures clears it up entirely. Only 180 millimeters of power supply unit clearance, but since it's got two positions for them, it certainly adds to the impressiveness. My spreadsheet doesn't take into account multiple power supply units positions, nor motherboards, by the way. It does add up extra PCI Express slots for additional motherboards, but maybe I need to consider upgrading it a little for those edge cases. Anyway, there's support for 14 three and a half inch drives or two and a half inch drives if you wanted. You can fit up to seven front 140 millimeter fans, six base 140 millimeter fans, and two rear 140 millimeter fans. Also eight side 140 millimeter fans and another eight top 140 millimeter fans. Big fan of that. And radio support, just all of them, all of the radiators. Just to give you an idea of how all these cases compared side by side, here's the overall compatibility chart. The W200 absolutely blowing the others out of the water, dominating the PCI Express slot section, fan and radiator compatibility. And to be fair to it, at $460, it's doing it at just over half the price of the Fantex Enthu Elite. Kind of a build-it-yourself IKEA flat pack case though, which probably saves them a good chunk on the manufacturing and assembly costs mainly, and shipping costs. Congratulations Thermaltake on the W200, now I think there's some space for some honorable mentions. The Thermaltake WP200. It's the same as the W200 that came in first place, but adds an expansion chassis with more fan, radiator, and power supply unit slots. It's actually really amusing to, uh, yeah, whoever needs that much, good on you. It's really cool, but kind of cheating for this list, so I haven't included it in the main list. The Nanoxia Deep Silence Super Tower Case only just didn't make the cut. It's Drive Cage City, if you need it, if you need it. Uh, it's all there. And just throwing in a few more that didn't quite make it. The Corsair 1000D, the Fractal Design Meshify 2XL, the Fractal Design Define R6, the Corsair, Corsair 7000D Airflow, and I just had to extend the honorable mentions to include the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Quad Stellar. Not just style. Now this isn't the be all and end all of maximum compatibility lists. You can look at it, at the question in a multitude of different ways, but everything being equal, that's what I came up with. Anyway, I hope you found this one useful. If you did happen to want to pick up one of these cases and want to thank me for bringing it to your attention and probably fund the channel for about a year, then you could always use the Amazon associate links in the video description. That'll take you right to your regional store. I will earn um, purchases made through those links, so just bear that in mind. Like and subscribe for more, Patreon to support me making videos like these and my you know, in-depth reviews, and I'll catch you in the next one.